Hey YouTube, welcome back. I've got another build here for you. This is something that I wanted to work on for a long time because I thought I had a great solution to it and we ended up having a different solution instead. So we're playing an Ignite Lich, which is a little bit funny. Uh, normally when you think about a Lich, you think about necrotic damage, physical damage, maybe poison damage, and you don't often think about fire damage. But there's a node in Hungering Souls that I really wanted to make use of and it's that node that converts it to fire and then gives it a ton of ignite effect and ignite duration. So ignite effect might change during the 0.9 patch. So if you're listening to this video in the future, go find out what ignite effect does. Because maybe it gives you penetration and maybe it gives you more damage. For me right now, it gives me more damage, which is why I'm trying to build around this node. So there's another content creator out there. I make a podcast with him. His name is Dread from Epic Builds. He put out a video a while ago using uh, Hungering Souls with Ignite for single target damage and to solve the problem of how to get clear speed, he used Infernal Shade. So it's this nice hybrid of a like a, a hit based Ignite thing from Hungering Souls that wants chance to ignite on hit. And then Infernal Shade, which is a spell elemental damage over time build that really wanted a bunch of adaptive damage. So he used a staff to kind of marry those two themes together. I... I knew about something that I wanted to try in the build. So first thing I'm going to show you is, uh, let's see, where's this skill? Spirit Plague. Spirit Plague has a node called Hemorrhage. It says enemies you inflict with Spirit Plague are also inflicted with bleeding for the same duration. So it's very much so like the poison node that was popular for a long time in the past when poison was super OP. But if you're using a unique pair of gloves called Malin's Hubris, your chance to bleed is converted to chance to ignite. So I don't know if this is a bug or an unintended interaction or what. It's certainly not OP. And it is kind of interesting. So we were using Malin's Hubris along with Spirit Plague in order to apply three ignites per click. And then we were using Spirit Plague as like our clear speed and uh, uh, as a way to get some extra percent increased uh, global damage over time from the Pestilence node to augment our single target damage, which would still be Hungering Souls. So that was the first idea of this. I wanted to like not use Infernal Shade if I could avoid it because I just wanted to try out this new interaction with Malins and Spirit Plague here. Next thing that we tried out was um, was Rip Blood. So I tried bringing Poison Lich back from the dead after the big Poison Lich nerf. Uh, and I wanted to like play like a Wandering Spirit, Spirit Plague kind of thing, just like a year ago, that build that was super OP in the past. And when I tried that, I remembered that I tried Transplant plus Rip Blood because Transplant can proc Rip Blood, Rip Blood hits twice, and hitting multiple times per right click with a bunch of cast speed is a pretty good way of being a poison build. So that's how I tried a poison build in the past. So I tried uh, using that same thing for a bleed converted to ignite with Malin's Hubris build this time around. So I tried that same thing. It was pretty good. We had, uh, let's see, I think the damage numbers on the dummy were topping out at like 250,000, which is fine. And it was a very enjoyable play style. I like doing it and everything. But uh, 250,000 damage on the dummy wasn't quite what I was looking for. This whole time, I wanted to use a Bastion of Honor because I really wanted to have that extra layer of defense because I primarily play in hardcore. So that's what the goal was. But uh, the next thing that we tried was... Um, using wandering spirits in order to help us apply even more ailments. So this would be like something that kind of augments our uh, our clear speed and then really augments our single target damage. So even though wandering spirits has no like hit damage, it can't crit or anything, it does shoot this spectral putrescence bit and this can apply ailments. It can apply shred, it applies poison natively, but for us, it's applying our ignites, right? So we are wandering around in uh, in our Reaper form with our Death Seal turned on most of the time. And then we click our Wandering Spirits after we have Death Seal on because it snapshots the more damage from that. We don't want to click that. We don't want to click Wandering Spirits when our Death Seal is not on, if we can help it. And then when we want damage, we can Goomba Stomp on top of something with Transplant because that'll give us a whole bunch of ignite stacks because of the node hemophilia here, which says every explosion that we have, and we have seven explosions when we go and stomp on top of something, 
that's seven extra uh, ignites. And then we have some like global chance to ignite on hit as well. So transplant is giving us a ton of damage when we're jumping on top of something's head. So that's kind of the idea of the build. We've sometimes used Bastion of Honor. We've sometimes used Flayer's Pride. I've got a Flayer's Pride here because I kind of think about this item as a offhand catalyst. If you're really playing in hardcore and you have a Bastion, if you can use it, you should be using it. And that's kind of boring. So hopefully Bastion gets nerfed at some point in the future. So I think about this as like an offhand catalyst. Like instead of giving me, instead of giving me plus six base crit, it's giving me a uh, bleed effect. I guess bleed effect for an ignite build. It gives me global chance to bleed on hit, which gets converted, of course, into chance to ignite on hit. And then it gives us a tiny bit of block chance for a tiny bit of extra defenses for our character. So this is what I primarily mapped with around 300 corruption. But realistically, if you're in hardcore, this item is boring and you should be using it. So that's the rundown of the build. Let me talk about this build in particular. I'll show you what the single target damage looks like before I forget, because I kind of forget off the top of my head what the uh, what the damage with Flare's Pride is. So let's go Reaper form, turn on Death Seal, click this, and then we'll hold down our E and our R button and see what those damage numbers look like. So we'll just do this for a couple seconds here while our Ignite stacks up, and it looks like just over 400,000 damage. And when I, when I present these kinds of builds, like ailment builds to people, if your ailment damage is ticking for over 200,000, your build's good. It could do more, you know, you don't want to do less. That's like the floor for pretty much clearing everything in the game. You can kill your tier four bosses. It'll take more than 30 seconds, but you'll do just fine. So 400,000 damage is quite good. 1 million damage is holy crap, this should be nerfed. So those are kind of some of the numbers that you can keep in the back of your mind when people tell you about how much damage their builds do. All right, so here's the character. Let's walk through the skills first. We are our single target damage. The reason that I wanted to play this character was uh, Hungering Souls with this note here, this Ignite Effect. Currently, Ignite Effect is a more damage multiplier. In the future, after 0 0.9, the multiplayer stuff, it sounds like they're changing Ignite Effect to do something else instead. So keep your eye on that for the patch notes in case you're watching this video in the future. The rest of this, we have a big more damage multiplier down here, a big more damage multiplier on the very top left. And I did not want to use the Holy Trinity node because it's annoying. So if you wanted to go a different route, if you wanted to have some kind of skeletons or vanguards in your build, um, if you found a way to keep those up for single target, you could spec into this. But I specifically did not want this in my build because I wanted to try to build this character without it. So that was my goal for myself. For our clear speed, we have this Wandering Spirits we already kind of talked about. So most important is all the nodes on the far right side to get the little projectile that applies ailments. So that's going to apply our um, our Ignites. We have as much utility from Spirit Swarm, Thin Veil, and Lingering Souls as possible. So cooldown, they uh, they last longer, and then, or sorry, they last longer, and then they're revealed more frequently just to have more of these green boys floating around. And then the most important note here is just a big more damage multiplier. This is two separate more multipliers. This is not 60% more damage. This is not 120% more damage. This is 60% more, 60% more. So it's something like 130-ish more damage to your build overall. So this is pretty good for us. After that, we have the... Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about Transplant next, because the last two skills are kind of samey. They're like every single build has these. So in Transplant, we have... Um, we're converting to Necrotic, which I guess is pretty important because Necrotic is going to help us make use of Soul Fire. This says chance to ignite on hit with fire skills and Necrotic skills. So that we need this Necrotic conversion down here to get like an extra 150% chance to ignite on hit. We have all the corpse explosions down here. I'll move my camera again. All the corpse explosions down here because those are all additional hits, which help us to scale you know, our uh, chance to ignite on hit. This node here, 100% times 7, so 7 extra ignites for our build. It bleeds us, but when we have Malin's Hubris on, it gives us a stack of ignite instead. And if we're ignited, we also get 100% increased armor while ignited because of Soul Fire. So this build actually has quite a bit of defense built into it just because of the itemization here. Last up, we have a huge call, 20% call when we bonk on top of something. And I grabbed some extra defensive nodes up here. If you wanted more mana, if you were trying to spam a skill over and over, you could spec into these nodes in the very top right to get some extra mana regeneration. 
but I wanted the defense here, so we took Bone Armor and Bone Armor Duration. The last two skills, this is kind of like Holy Aura and Sigils of Hope. They're kind of boring, but you've seen these before. Hopefully nothing here stands out to you as too interesting. So we have our Reaper form. Up across the top, we have a bunch of cast speed, pathing through some movement speed, percent increased damage, percent increased damage. I like having my Reap and my Transplant on two separate cooldowns so that I can fly through a map with two different movement skills. I think it feels really good. We need to have Marked for Death because Marked for Death is a curse and it helps us take advantage of that node and wandering spirits down here. Damage to damned enemies and damage to cursed enemies. Our, our, uh, let's see, our curse is coming from this node here. This is marked for death. So 10% chance on hit and that we hit a lot. And then the, um, I might as well mention this right now. The damn chance is coming from our base mastery here. This 24% damn chance on hit. From our death seal, the important parts here is we're specking all the way to the bottom left because this node is the reason that you use death seal to begin with. It locks you at 33%, so you get armor, increased damage, more damage, less damage taken, stun mitigation. You get everything you possibly want. We have one point here for mortal pulse so that when we turn this on, we have this pulse around us, which is a necrotic pulse, which applies the chance to ignite with a necrotic skill right here. We're procking hungering souls off this. We very seldomly actually cast a Hungering Souls unless we're actually on a single target encounter. So most of the time, our Hungering Souls is just being procced off of Death Seal so that when we're walking around, we have the red noggins floating around with us here. I like these points down here, just having haste on release. So when my Death Seal turns off, my character gets a nice little boost of movement speed so I can keep running. Reaper form, we talked about that. I think that about covers it for the skills. Let's go on to the mastery real quick. The mastery, it's going to look pretty generic in case you've played a Lich in the past. Um, we have some fluff nodes that you wouldn't normally see because uh, when we're a fire damage build, we're not playing crit, so we can't take the crit nodes. We have a shield in our offhand, so we can't take the if you do not have a shield equipped nodes. Um, we are not a fizz, necrotic, or poison build, so we don't get to spec into these nodes. So most of what you're going to see in here is pretty boring, right? We've got some intelligence. We have bleed on hit, which gets converted to ignite, of course. We have these nodes up here, percent increased damage if you've killed recently. So that applies to us just fine. These nodes are very important. If you're not used to playing a Lich, you should take these. These nodes are busted. If you click on your potion for the next four seconds, you take 50% less fizz, 50% less necrotic. It looks like there's a downside here, that current health drained per second. Believe me, it's not a downside. You're going to have an incredible amount of leech for any lich build that you're playing. This is a node that you want to put 10 out of 10 points into it. Sometimes I put 5 out of 10, you should put 10 out of 10. Next up here is what I would call the most important point in lich, just having this insane amount of leech, uh, generic damage leeches health. It's not hit damage, it's generic, so it does work for damage over time. And then the increased health leech is a multiplier on top of that. So, uh, I guess we have four points over here just to like get some extra cast speed when we use a potion. So I like these nodes too. For the gearing, we're trying to fly through this. We'll see how much progress we can make. For the gearing, there is a prefix modifier that gives you percent increased fire damage. That's what you would want here. You can go vitality intelligence. You can go vitality um, fire damage, like the shared fire damage affix. That's pretty much all you'd want. The rest of this, I think Death Seal, you could seal Death Seal on your helmet because you only really need plus one level to it. So you'll see that in my Death Seal, I've got 22 levels here. But this last point right here is not important for us. But I think getting just plus one level helps us to have five out of five here and three out of three here. So sealing that and then having either intelligence or vitality on your helmet is where you'd want to be. You're looking for modifiers like fire penetration, Elemental damage over time is huge. Remember, elemental damage over time is much bigger than fire damage, which is also much bigger than elemental damage. So that Ellie dot is a really important word for us, and we like to get that in as many, as many places as possible. Because we're playing a Death Seal Lich, our health is right next to our endurance. So it's really important for us to cap our endurance whenever possible. I thought about using a one-handed axe, the dragon horn axe, or the dragon bone axe, which has that 100% chance to bleed on hit implicit modifier. Um, 
but that cannot get elemental damage over time. And I was trying to get as much increased damage on this build as possible. And I think I already have enough chance to ignite. So if you were going the one-handed axe route, you'd get like a little bit more chance to bleed, which gets converted to ignite. Um, but you wouldn't have the minus three. You wouldn't have the cast speed. You couldn't put elemental damage over time as a prefix there. Um, it'd be a little bit different. Maybe it's better, but maybe it's like a tiny bit better. So I think I'm pretty fine just using this thing here. For one very noticeable number here, my critical strike avoidance uh, is at zero. I'm currently mapping at about 300 corruption, and I feel totally fine not even using a Bastion of Honor. And that's because of this pair of boots. These boots, you'll see these a lot in Ignite builds because they have the Ignite effect. They got some fire damage, movement speed. They're pretty good pair of boots. Recently, they were updated to have this line of text at the bottom, 78% less bonus damage taken from critical strikes. Monsters never get more crit multi than their default crit multi. If if there was a line of text that said like monsters have plus 200% crit multi, I would not do what I'm currently doing here. But even as a hardcore player like myself, I think that having zero crit avoidance and capping, capping, addressing all of your crit needs just by putting on a pair of boots like this, I think that's an appropriate thing to do. So if I get crit, which I'm often going to because these things actually increase my chance of receiving crit. If and when I get crit, instead of taking the whole crit multi, I'm only taking 22% of that bonus damage. So I think this is fine. And I really wanted to highlight this for a long time. So that I think I think this is an appropriate build to highlight that. We're still using a shield, but we have zero critical strike avoidance. And it still feels totally fine for us running around through 100 corruption. For the idols, we have uh, cooldown recovery speed for transplant because they're trying to Goomba stomp on top of monsters as often as possible. And it just gives us a ton of mobility, which is both offense and defense for ourselves. So that's what we're looking for. Bleed gets converted to ignite. So that's a nice affix to look for as well. Percent increased damage over time is a nice place to be. So I kind of like that. We've got some space for some one uh, two by ones up here to get some extra resistance, resistance. We have our throne of ambition, which gives us a ton of armor on top of the self-ignite technology that we're using from Soulfire to get us another 100% increased armor here. And then we have this little one by one, which gives us more hit damage uh, and you cannot deal crits. We're not specced into any critical strike chance at all. And I, I think this is worthwhile. Singularity is a really underpowered item. It's not that good, but for us, we have some adaptive damage coming in from using a wand here because we're not using the axe, remember? And then our wave of death has a nice chunk of damage to it. Hungering souls deals some nice hit damage to it. Uh, transplant will have some hit damage on it as well. And having a little one by one just to guarantee that we have 18% more damage, it's fine. Think about it this way. By default, you have... 5% chance to crit on hit, right? Because that's like your base crit for everything before you have critical strike modifiers, which is approximately 15% more damage. But it's 15% more damage, but it's kind of spiky damage because you're only critting every once in a while. So as long as you have a singularity that's higher than 15 and you have zero critical strike investment whatsoever, you can technically make use of this. I really wish that EHG would double or maybe triple the damage numbers on singularity. Because then we can see what people actually want to do with this item. Because as it is right now, it's really, really not that strong. Even though I kind of like it. For our first blessing here, we have Ignite on hit. This is pretty important for us because we are in a Ignite build. Wow. Next up is Lightning Res. Uh, then we have plus to all resistances. For me, remember, I'm avoiding Critical Strike Avoidance. Because I kind of already have it capped with my Fire Dragon Shoes. So I did not want to have Critical Strike Avoidance from this. I just had all res instead. We're a fire damage build and we hit a whole lot. So we have chance to shred fire resistance on hit. And then we have our defensive node over here from Age of Winter. Age of Winter has a couple good things for us. Because we're very often using Death Seal, our health is very low relative to our endurance. So we could get like the uh, plus 150 endurance threshold. And that's pretty good for pretty much every Lich build. 
Uh, I went for armor here because I got it because I couldn't get endurance threshold. Good lord. But if you're using a Bastion of Honor instead of your DPS option over here, remember with Bastion of Honor, you are heavily incentivized to get a block effectiveness blessing from Hayrot instead. Because with, with a good roll on the implicit of Bastion of Honor and a good roll from that blessing, that'll put you at about 42% less damage taken um, from your block effectiveness over here. I guess it's reduced damage taken, isn't it? So if you're using a Bastion of Honor, just remember that you should probably have a block effect blessing if at all possible. So that about covers the build. This is less than 1 million ignite damage. Which I guess is to be expected because we're using a shield and we're trying to make a nice balanced character. Ah, it's so poor. So I like where this character ended up. It's been really fast and easy to play overall in uh, 300 Corruption. We've been killing bosses just well. I like the progression of where I wanted to play with Spirit Plague at the beginning. Like Spirit Plague, trying out Rip Blood instead trying out Wandering Spirits instead, and also trying out like Infernal Shade, which happens to hit, but sometimes does infinite damage. So I like the progression of this character, and I thought it would be a good story to share with you as well, because I like where the character ended up too. So as always, if you have questions about this, you can drop by twitch.tv slash pair the pig, streaming this game almost every day. Discord's a good place to be. You can leave comments in the comment section of this video as well. As always, thanks for being here. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section. I'll see you next time.